Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're going to be talking about IPRGCs. So with that, let's give it a go. So remember, in our retina, we've been talking a lot about two photoreceptors. The first one are the rods, and the rods, as you know, are responsible for seeing light and dark. The other type of photoreceptor that we've been talking a lot about are the cones, and the cones are responsible for seeing color. Now, there is another important type of photoreceptor cell present in our eye, and this is going to be called the IPRGCs. So the IPRGC stands for Intrinsically Photosensitive Retinal Ganglion Cells. So what we're going to do in this video is talk about what these cells do and how they work. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is this absorption spectrum. So this absorption spectrum, as we see here, is giving us the absorption spectra for all of our different photoreceptor cells. However, the one that we're going to be considering ourselves with today is going to be melanoopsin. And the reason why is because melanoopsin is going to be the visual protein or the protein that is responsible for absorbing photons inside the IPRGCs. So the IPRGCs are going to contain the light-sensitive protein called melanoopsin. Melanoopsin is most sensitive in the blue part of the spectrum, around 475 nanometers, as we see right here. So now that we know what visual protein is present inside the IPRGCs, let's talk about how these cells react to light. So if we were to take an IPRGC cell and expose it to light, you would see something occur that's a little different from the other photoreceptor cells that we've been talking about. So if we expose it to light, what would happen is that the cell would actually depolarize. So IPRGCs depolarize in response to light. And if the stimulus is strong enough, they can generate action potentials. Now note that the threshold of the IPRGCs is very high. Therefore, it requires a very bright light to hit it in order to hit the threshold. And another thing is that our IPRGCs take only seconds to respond to a stimulus, and they can maintain their responses even when light levels are sustained for hours. So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the visual transduction pathway that occurs inside the IPRGC. So in order to understand this visual transduction pathway, I do have to say something, that the Visual transduction pathway in IPRGCs is not really known yet. However, this is a possible visual transduction mechanism that can occur inside these cells. So what we have inside our cell is we have our melanoopsin protein. So the melanoopsin protein will absorb a photon. And when this does this, it will activate a GQ protein. The GQ protein will then activate phospholipase C which converts PIP2 into IP3 and DAG. Now IP3 will then move into the endoplasmic reticulum and go to the IP3 receptors. And when it binds to these receptors, it allows them to open, allowing calcium to flow into the cell. Now the calcium then can interact with TERP channels, and these TERP channels, when they interact with calcium open, allowing cations to flow into the cell and therefore a depolarization to occur. So remember that for our rod and cone cells, when they respond to light, they hyperpolarize. Therefore, the IPRGCs are different in that they depolarize in response to light. So one more thing to know is that the IPRGCs can also receive input from rods and cones via synapses of bipolar and amacrine cells. So the last thing that we're going to talk about is what these IPRGCs actually do. So what do these cells actually do? Well, they actually have a number of purposes. First, they may actually help report the levels of ambient daytime light. And some IPRGCs actually send their axons to the suprachiasmatic nuclei in the hypothalamus to make sure that our circadian clocks are synchronized with the night and day cycles of the day. So IPRGCs are also known to mediate the pupillary light reflex by sending axons to their pretectal nuclei, and the activation of IPRGCs will also inhibit the production of melatonin, which also further shows how it's involved with the regulation of the circadian rhythm. So that's it for this video. I hope it helped you get a little bit of an understanding of what these interesting cells are, and I hope to see you in the next one. 
Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.